So we're short on time. It's already 2.10. And I have to literally leave the country at 3.15. So uh, we're going to get started. If you're going to be developing today, um, we are building something. So wow. we are going to try to build something or several things today. So if you're going to be developing and you do not yet have uh, a checkout or a local copy of Tienda, then I guess raise your hand and let me know. Okay, because, or no, if you're going to be developing. <laughs> you don't have one? So, but there is a, uh, there's a thumb drive going around that has it, that he's got it. So Jeremy has it, once he's done, just copy it in and uh, uh, we'll work on that. Would you need an absolute latest to uh, check out? Or? No, you'll be fine, because you can just upload it right if you want. Yeah. Um, Sorry. And so if you're not going to be developing or if you just want to share ideas uh, or do whatever you want, uh, just sort of stick around and uh, participate in whatever way you want. Um, I'm going to probably build something uh, relatively simple up here uh, before just answering questions for anybody as they build whatever they want on the 14th. Okay? So the idea is... I'm not going to do that. We're going to do it on the SVN live with the internet spotty, so that's why we're doing the phone drive solution. It's not existent, so we're just going to do it on your local, day, local uh, computers. Um, I want to take about five to six minutes to run over some of the key concepts before we start developing. Um, and then these are the these are the concepts: the Tienda models, tables, helpers, the 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 system-wide loader, some plugins, including the bases and the different plugin events, and then template overrides. Okay? So I'm going to try to breeze through this because I assume all of you are developers and don't really need too much of this. Cases where 
the, the Jtable class will do something special, uh, like our, um, our orders table object performs a bunch of fun things like calculating the totals, the, the price, right, the, the amount that the order is worth based on the different items you've added to it. So, for instance, you can just get a, an instance of, Jake, of uh, the orders table, the Tanda table orders, add items to it using this kind of method. And the items array here is just an array of product products. Um, so you could have used, say, the products model from the previous slide to get an array, a list of products. You would loop through each of them, add each one of them to the order object, and then you just help to calculate the totals. And that's going to set various properties in the order table object, including the shipping costs, the, uh, the order subtotal, tax totals, based on other properties you set in this exact same way. You'll set things like the geozone based on the address. Or you could actually just set address and, and feed it an address object. Does that make sense, or is that still a little too abstract? Okay, so those are the tables, and they're all stored in admin slash tables. The next thing is our helpers, and the main reason we have them is to perform other actions that don't really fall neatly underneath the model, controller, and table. Uh, and an example of one of those would be, say, uh, converting a currency to something else. So if you've got uh, a, a raw number, you want to convert it from US dollars to uh, Japanese yen, you can just send it through a method that looks like this. You can't help a currency and then underscore. You can instantiate all of the helper objects the same way you would anything else. So you could say, uh, get a, an object in the TM to help currency and then do whatever you want with it. Okay? And there are, other, there are other helpers, all stored in admin slash helpers. They include um, things for moving images, actually. Uh, we have one for getting a particular item ID for a category if it's in your menu tree. Uh, we have ones for you know, getting properties of objects that aren't easily accessed from just getting a table instance, but an instance of a JVM table object. Okay, so. Um, on your own, take a look through the different helpers, or while you're building whatever you're building today, ask me if there's a helper that already does this. In most instances, there probably already is. Um, we have something of a loader that we use. It's defined in admin defines. Um, the, the, I guess the main use is to, uh, I guess, prevent long require statements and to only add uh, a fi file to the Autoloader in Joomla, if necessary, uh, and you can you can just load a file by doing something like this: can the load the name of the class and then the the uh, location of the file. You can actually send additional property or some additional arguments to that uh, loader to tell it where the file is. And this would work with any class in Joomla's extensions, not just. So if you wanted to load a particular model file that is in some other extension, you could use this loader to do it. You just tell it using documentation where the file is. Okay, and add it to the add it to the to the uh, Joomla auto loader. And this thing right here, the to get class, uh, will just simply do the same thing as the to load. It will load that file, and then if possible, it will get an instance of that of that. Uh, class, okay? and you can chain things in order to just tell it to automatically do whatever you want with that instance of the object. Okay, so for instance, in this, in this call right here, I'm just getting the item ID of this particular category ID with that same line. Does that make sense? Yeah. Uh, you can extend a lot of uh, functionality, of course, uh, through plugins, but perhaps it's also an idea to include uh, the ability to override the total class within this uh, loader? You can, you can actually already overload, um, override everything in TM. Okay. So if you have, if you for instance wanted to write a system plugin that would load um, one of these classes already, that, that would load a file that would define TM to helper base already. When you get an instance, when you get, uh, when you load the file, it first checks to see if there's already... Okay, so the same principles that do, do my loader itself. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So you can, you can override everything in Tanda 
as long as you're going through, as long as you're using Tamper mode throughout the entire application or extension that you build. Okay. Uh, any other questions about that? We're moving through this very quickly. Great. The plugins. Um, we have a few base classes in Tienda that we use for not just all of our plugins, but also uh, specific plugins like our recording plugins, our payment plugins, our shipping plugins, uh, and our tool plugins. Um, so I would, I would encourage you to take a look at that folder, the admin library plugins, and at the very least extend our base class, which is sort of the file um, admin library plugins underscore base. Uh, what it does is it gives you several classes, several methods that allow you to um, do template overrides with whatever HTML is displayed by your plugin. Okay, and so if you're building a payment plugin, chances are it's going to be interpreting that payment processor's data at some point and displaying the HTML. You want to leave whatever that you want to leave the HTML to be overridden by the admin that is building the site. Right, so. Use the template overrides. They're all part of the base plugin class. And our base plugin class just simply extends to JPlugin. plugin. OK? Uh, and also, depending on what you're doing, if you're building, say, a report or a tool, uh, we have a bunch of handy little uh, methods inside the classes that allow you to do multi-step forms with just a plugin um, by virtue of using the template override folder within your plugin. So um, you, can, you can create anything with a plugin. You could, create a new MVC structure entirely. And we have some, some samples of those already. We have a report plugin that involves uh, two steps. You know, enter, enter, uh, input forms, and then submit and output data. We have tools that convert data from VirtuMark from XCart that are three or four step plugins that have multiple forms within, within them. Um, and then we have uh, a bug reporting plugin, which actually um, overrides the entire admin side display uh, that allows users to, by clicking one particular URL, allows them to load up that plugin and perform whatever action they want inside the plugin. Okay, and you can see the format here. You're telling Tienda to do task. To do what task? Load the element, and the element is just the, the, the name of that particular plugin. And then you tell it to perform a particular task within inside that plugin. So it's really simple. You're just telling Tienda itself to load the plugin, and then you're telling it to run a particular task within that plugin. And you can repeat that process all you want. You can submit forms to this. And you can, it allows you to really extend Tienda to do whatever you want. Okay, and I think that might be the last one. Oh no, the template overrides. Did you guys have any questions about the plugins there before I get all the way Okay, so the last one, the template overrides. Um, what we try to do is include all CSS files and all JavaScript files within the template files of Tienda everywhere. That allows the template developers to completely override everything from not just the, uh, the way Tienda looks, but also the way that the JavaScript methods function. So um, try to do no logic inside your template files if you're overriding it. Um, if you're overriding them, try just to display um, and include whatever you want. In fact, I mean, Jeremy, you know this because you were you you worked with Anthony <coughs> the, the shop front. Um, and like I said earlier, the template overrides. If you extend our base plugin classes, uh, our plugins will then support template overrides as well. Um, and by default, if you're writing the module or view correctly, Joomla supports template overrides. So try to, try to do this with, with your template overrides if you're building them today. And the last thing is something I didn't get a chance to go over in the uh, demo before uh, this workshop, but you can do already category-specific and product-specific template overrides. So if you wanted all of your cameras to use one particular layout, you can set that layout at the category level and it's, it's, it reflects a little bit of what you can do in Flexi, but it allows you to have a completely different layout for an entire category of products when they view that product. And at the same time, you can also do product-specific layout overrides. Uh, I have one sample that I can show you where um, we just disabled the add to cart function for particular products that say weren't in stock, 
or that we didn't want people buying it, but uh, uh, we wanted them to be able to see the product. Like when, say, like when Amazon puts a, a DVD that hasn't been released yet on their site, you can view the product with a review page, but you can't add it to your cart yet. So if you wanted to replicate that functionality, you can do it with a product-specific template over. Okay? So, we've run through the major concepts. Now I just want to sort of brainstorm <coughs> on some ideas that you guys might want to build. I have several of my own, including the one I'd like to build for you. But if there are particular extensions that you'd like us to work together on building during the workshop as a group, then we can certainly do that. So I'm going to leave this as amorphous as possible. Yes? Subscription, something, paying for a subscription for content. A subscription for content. Okay. Um, that's one I did. I don't know if we'll be able to do all of that within no. 40 minutes, but we can certainly start it. Um, write that down. Are there any other ideas or requests? Packager, uh, Packager, to, to make packages of the shipping for the shipment uh, component. Like a shipping plugin? Yeah, shipping plugin that they, they can use in the, in the, in the, in the, in the, the warehouse. So uh, they don't have to uh, manually um, change the order status of, of every product. But they, they, they should um, say, print the, the package uh, slip okay. and uh, change the order status just uh, with a few clicks or something. With a few clicks, okay. Yeah, that might be a little bit more complicated than what we can do. How about, how about something like a cross selling? Yeah. So that if somebody, uh, a visitor comes to the store, we can offer them other products that are associated uh -huh. with the product that they're looking at. Any others? Yeah. Vendor products. Vendor products? Yes. We've already got that. And I can show you, if you would prefer, uh, this is a workshop, so I'd rather do a workshop and build something. But if you want, we can show you what we have with the vendor sales. It's already in degree. That's in the enterprise version. It's already there. So you can set up an Amazon type store with the enterprise version. Um, when is the enterprise available? I'd hoped. I wanted to be able to demo it today, but I couldn't. So Q2 is what I say to everybody. That's that. Any other requests? Okay, great. So I'll tell you what, we'll start, and it looks like we're probably going to do this as a group rather than doing individual breakouts. Is that, is that something you guys would prefer? Say, seeing something as a group. Let me do that. Um, I'd like to do something simple because we only have a few minutes. We only have about 40 minutes. Um, so, how about we build a quick module for. module that displays uh, popular products on the front end, or maybe featured products or something like that? Which would you prefer? Either. Either. Get, a, get an instance of the order items model and then change the query a little bit so that it just returns the items that have been ordered the most um, and returns an array of those product options. Or of those product <laughs> options. Okay? And I wanted to show you how simple that is. So, what we can do just for sake of speed is uh, copy one of these guys. Jeremy, did you fix that one? This is 
the module. <coughs> That's just the skeleton structure of the module. All right? You guys all know that. Um, so what we're going to try to do So we're just going to use the uh, get products method inside the helper to get to uh, to get the products that we want to display in here. Now we have a report already built that reports on popular products, best sellers is what we call it. So I want us to take a look at the the way we did that. As you can see, this is just a, a plugin that extends the base report plugin file that we have inside Tienda, and we're using the Tienda load method to load that particular class. Um, we're giving it an element name, and we're telling it what model we'll be using. All right, and that's only really relevant to the Tienda report, but uh, this later function here, get data, is where we're going to uh, we're going to see where that port arrivals model comes into play. This is all we need to do in order to get a list of the uh, best-selling products ordered by the number of times they've been purchased. Uh, and you can see what's happening here. Oh, you can't see that. I'm sorry. You can. Okay. What this is doing is it's getting an instance of the order items model because we told the report at the very top that the primary model to be used for this report is the order items model. Okay. The order items model looks like this. And you can see that we've, we've predefined several filters that you can use for, honestly, for just filtering the query now. Um, and so you can set the state, set any of these uh, states when you get an instance of the model in order to filter out the query. Okay. So in the report bestsellers, Query Builder, we first get an instance of just a plain query. It's a query object. And we're going to take that query and we're going to tell it to do a few additional things. We're going to tell it to group all of its results by the product ID. We don't want a ton of instances of uh, each product, right? <clears throat> the second thing we're going to do is we're going to tell it to give us the, uh, the dollar amount for all those total sales. Okay, by just telling it to add one more field to the query. And then we're going to tell it to order the query by total sales in descending order. Right? We set the query in the model and then get all the uh, resulting, uh, resulting product objects. If you would like to uh, add something like, uh, I would only see the popular uh, products were only on the last month, uh, can that include it? You would do because those because those uh, filters already exist. You could change this around to before we get an instance of the query. We would do model set state. Oops. Um, and what was the name? Filter date from and filter date to. So here you would set it to, I don't know, whatever date today, right? So you would do, I guess, the date. And let's just get an instance of date. Is that right? The date. Yeah, that. Great. 
So this is going to set the filter so that date from is greater than today. Right? But we wouldn't want that. We would want date from to be greater than one month from today. So you'd have to change the, or one month back from today. So you might have to do some magic to, to set this value right here. But you get the idea, right? Um, so I'm going to take this out here, though. And borrow this, most of this here, for our module. And then get products. How much of this do we need? just a little bit, but we don't have to do all of that additional stuff. Setting the table that's being used, etc, etc. And so this actually should, it's going to return all. If we wanted to really you know, fix up this module, we'd probably put in some parameters like how many do we want returned? Five. One of your top five modules. So how about, there might be a setting in here already. Max number. Great, so we'll just use the parameter for max number. Max underscore number. And for, for standard filters, like setting the limit, setting an ID, uh, the ones that are already inside the order items um, uh, table, you can actually just use um, some of the ones that are inside our base class. We built in our base class for the model, such as model. <coughs> set stage limit, and we would just use this for any of those. What was it? Max number. Telling the helper to get the products. And then, I don't know if you really need that, but we're telling it to count the products that were returned. And it's going to send all of that into the default.php file for the module. And here, like I said in the brief intro, add a CSS file within the template file for everything modules, views, et cetera, et cetera, so that if you override the output of the module, the, the template designers can override it as well. We actually don't have a CSS file for it, so I'm just going to count that. Um, this is doing a fun stuff, a lot of fun stuff here. Just whether or not we want to display the price, display the description. These are all parameters set inside the XML file. But let's just for now dump the data that's returned. Yeah, 
list of the best selling products. It's going to return just the top five, and we can confirm it by running the same report on the admin side after looking at the output here. So we quickly build this module and we can install it. Fun little thing. If you do end up connecting to the SVN, um, we use ant and build files while we're while you're developing. So you wouldn't have to now that I've installed it, you wouldn't actually have to reinstall you know, the file over and over again to sort of test out your changes on your local host. So the only thing you'll have to do is add to the build file a reference to this new module that we wrote. So what, that's, what this has done is it allows us to use Ant just to update our local host with any changes to the, the module that we make here on the SVN repository. So it was giving us this error, helper line 48 params doesn't exist.
comparisons, we could show them horizontally in a list with an add to, add to cart button underneath one of them. You can do whatever you want. But what I really just wanted to show you there was you know, how quickly you can build a simple little module, get whatever data you wanted from the Tianda uh, database. Okay. Does anybody have any questions about that? And would you like me to continue going, making it look a little bit better than just the data dump here? No, I'm going to do something else. This is fine. That's fine. Yeah, great. Right. So one of the other requests that we had was. The shipping slip printing, I don't know if we have enough time for that. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, but uh, I have it in my notepad here now. So. Did you write a complete ERP system for that? <laughs> um, product relations we could do. We've got, uh, I think we have the database tables in place already for it. Check. Right, so we could we could we could write the modifications here for um, associating how you would change the uh, product editing form on the admin side um, uh, to display a new set of inputs, and then also have to save that input when the product is saved on the admin side. So what I'm talking about is changing this page here. Okay, so how about uh, the MacBook? <laughs> Changing this to display anything you want, including input field, um, and then how to save it as well. Okay, so let me do that, and we'll call it. So these are going to be the three main files for it. XML file.
that's it. I'm just going to put this back in. Okay, so that's the installer. <coughs> JavaScript file. Great. So that's what this is essentially what we're going to be adding to the form, to the product form. Down here, we're going to name it. We don't have a default model. Don't need all that. So what we want, what we need to know now are what are the plugin events fired on the saving of a product and what are the plugin events fired on the displaying of a form of a product. So let's take a quick look. It's very easy. Admin views products. And we just want the form.php file. And here you can see that there's a on before display product form method. And that's displayed before the forms even uh, rendered. Excuse me, before the forms displayed. You've got one on after display product form main column. And that is on this page. This is the main column. So at the bottom of this section of the form is a plugin event fire, so you can add what, what you want there. This trigger is on the on after display the right column, so you can uh, display an additional legend box here if you want. And then you have one more, which is the absolute bottom of the form, on after display product form, which would be after both columns are displayed. So if you wanted something to cross all the way across, you can do that. So why don't we just do that guy? And what's being passed in? is the product object that's being edited. Um, that's right here. So we're going to use this method in our related products. And let's just rename that guy. It's being passed the product. And all we want to do, we're going to save this
So all that's going to do is that's going to render our form.php file, which is going to ex uh, echo hello world in a little input box. You would format that however you want. The other thing you would want to do is fire this plugin when the product is saved. And you have a couple different options. We'll go to products controller. Look at the statement.